Oh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, this little study here, uh, today's the Sabbath. Uh, it's about noonish, and the cats are both sleeping, <laughs> and the wife's gone, so I shouldn't have any problems being interrupted here. It's funny how easily my focus is, is lost or distracted and stuff. This is strictly my opinion, okay? And I know that a lot of people criticize the book of John. They question it later. Uh, they, I've also understood that it was written by someone else who was a writer for John, as he quoted it, uh, that he wrote it after Revelations and stuff. Uh, so, but the reason I personally like or trust the book of John and the first, second, third John and the book of Revelations is the consistency of his testimony. And uh, this has been in formulated, like I told you, I have different uh, subjects that I'm studying on the front burners and then I also have back burner studies and I'll run across something that's like, oh, this would apply to here. Some people may call that cherry picking, but I'm finding clues and details in scripture that help me to bring things to where it clicks in my head, see. And back when I was a Trinitarian, uh, the book of John, the first chapter, verses 1 and 3 and stuff, uh, were, I completely view it differently now. I start to see what the author is referring to. I, you will see, I'm hopefully going to build this to where you can see and understand for yourself as you're reading that the change of emphasis or as John's writing, he's thinking of the Messiah or he's thinking of the Father when he says certain things. And as a guy, my wife says I jump from subject to subject sometimes in a paragraph when it should be in several paragraphs, see? And so uh, I just wanted to bring this up to you. We're talking about John the Beloved who leaned upon Jesus all the time. And uh, as I get to see him as a witness, I, some things to me are more clear. So I'm just going to share these things. This is all my opinion, okay, and stuff. John the Beloved tells a little of why he says what he does. Why he says this. Okay, he gives us little clues. First John, now I'm going to kind of go backwards. I'm going to jump around a little bit to hopefully this will fit by the end. Then the conclusion would make sense to you. First John 2 verses 26. Also, I just got through watching uh, Tony... Uh, Rabbi uh, Singer on the Antichrist and it still amazes me how his view of Christianity is based off of Paul's view of Christianity and not what Yeshua actually said and I can see why the Jews reject Yeshua based on the teachings of Paul see but if you start teaching reading the teachings of Christ then I understand some stuff better see first John 2 26 I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you so he to me is making it clear those short letters why he is writing things to help make it clear for people let's back up some first John 1 verse 1 through 3 that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Okay, the word beginning you're going to see throughout this thing. And so we got to remember which beginning is he talking about? The beginning of the earth, the beginning of Yeshua's ministry, or the beginning of when John first met Jesus. See, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon, and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Verse 2, the life, see his focus, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life. He's looking at the life of Christ. 
not the death, burial, and resurrection. It's the life of Christ, our Messiah, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. He is speaking all in his lifespan of his walk with Yeshua, our Lord Jesus. See, if we start focusing, if you look at this, even though he wrote this some years later, in his paradigm or in his mind, he's looking at my lifespan when I came to know the Messiah and personally. Verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you may have fellowship with us. My question is how can we have fellowship with contrary doctrine? Okay, let's go back to the verse. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Yeshua the Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. See, so I'm looking at this and he's writing these letters in what do I keep wanting to say it? I keep losing the word. Uh, uh, the first person or uh, uh, it's the current time. It's, it's the, he's in real time. In real time is what I'm looking He's looking at real time. I'm writing this in real time of when I was with him. See, so you can read through that and look at it and see what your thoughts are. John, now we're going to jump to the Gospel of John 1. 36 through 37. Let's get a little history of what John is talking about. And he, John the Baptist, this is verse 36 and 37, looked at Yeshua as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Verse 37. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Yeshua. Verse, let's jump down to verse 40. John 1, verse 40. One of the two who heard John the Baptist speak and follow Yeshua was Andrew, Simeon Peter's brother. See, John the Beloved, that's why we got to keep track of it, was already following John the Baptizer and his teachings of repentance. John the Beloved was already active in the ministries of what was going on at the time. Him and Andrew was clearly involved with John the Baptist, the baptizer. Now we can better understand what John meant in the beginning of the chapter. Now let's go back to the chapter, see? Because again, when we read stuff, we are looking at the Bible as a whole. We're looking at the Bible as what we were taught by the church. So our presuppositions, our, our, our eyes are sifting through all the church stuff that we were taught. So then when we read it, we presuppose stuff. Does that make sense? John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. In the beginning. Now we can see when the beginning is, when John followed Yeshua. In the beginning. John's writing this letter was the Word, and the Word was with God. See, he is speaking about Yahweh the Father, and the Word was God. In the beginning, not back then, but in the beginning, when he seen Yeshua walk by, and John said, this is the Lamb of God, John the Beloved decided to follow him. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. He seen John witness the Holy Spirit come down upon him. Yeshua when he was baptized. He was in the beginning with God. All things that were made through him and without him was nothing made that was made. Think about this. See, he refocused his speech and his statement on the Father. He's basically quoting Genesis 1.1. In the beginning Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. See, all things were made by him. He's talking about the Father. Let's go to verse 4. Let's look at the change of emphasis. Verse 4. In him, Yeshua, was life, and the life was the light of men. See, he went from the Father. He is talking about his experience from the beginning. This, to me, has helped me to fully understand this, but this is the same text 
I use as a Trinitarian to prove that Jesus was God from the, the Godhead, the Trinity. But no, that is not. He has changed an emphasis here. And if you disagree, that's fine. We have a free will and we're all able to do this. Verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. See, to me, this has freed me up as I start to understand the author who wrote the books of John and Revelations. Revelations 1, verse 1 and 3. You notice I'm not saying that they are the Word of God. I'm saying these are the words and the witness and the testimony of John the Beloved. Revelations 1, verses 1 and 3. The revelations of Yeshua the Christ, which God gave to show to His servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending His angel to his servant John. See, this is where it sounds like someone else is writing it. Is John? Maybe John doesn't have, I don't know, paper and pen. <laughs> and that pens back then, pen and ink. Verse two: Who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Yeshua the Christ? See, John has always made a clear distinction. And John seventeen three, I think it is, when he says the Father is greater than I. I used to say the word means vast, but he makes a clear distinction. Let's go back to verse 2. Who bore witness to the word of God and to the testament of Christ, even to all that he saw. Verse 3. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear, who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. My words here, my conclusion is, if you read John's words in real time as it happened to him in his life, then you will understand better what he is saying. He may have a person writing down the words that are, are written here. See, John's testimony, Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, always had witnesses. That is why the apostles were named that. It's the purpose, not the definition of the word apostle. His purpose was he wanted 12, but he had 14 people because Judas committed suicide. And, but he had two backup men, and Peter knew that, and so they called upon him to show him which one, and Matthias is the one that became the, the 12th. But Yeshua wanted 12 personal identified witnesses who were there from the time the, the Holy Spirit came upon him. God's Spirit came upon Yeshua and to the time of his death, resurrection, and it showed his life. John was a witness in his book, in his letter, the book of John. He writes down details that no one else could have known but to be John the Beloved because no one else was there. Paul could not have possibly been an apostle based on what Yeshua said because he was not there through the life and, and the whole entire event. So someone in that light, Yeshua, made it clear. No, let me rephrase that. Let me, let me say that again. The light, Paul, since he'd never seen Yeshua, he never talked to Jesus, he never walked with Jesus, he never stood there at the cross and, and, and seen him be crucified, he never seen anything that Paul said, who are you, Lord? And that light claimed to be Jesus. And that light deceived so many people because we believe what the light said and then we believe what Paul said. See? So anyway, I just wanted to share that, that John the Beloved is a witness. And at this moment, uh, I know the scriptures are tainted. I know there's scriptures that are flawed. I know that there's words that are mistranslated or verses that are left out. There's verses that have been added and stuff. But John, to me, is a very good human witness in his writings to what he saw and what he shared. So, Father, thank you for witnesses. Thank you for uh, Yeshua and what he did, his life is what brings us life. His blood, always in the Old Testament, refers to the life. 
the life is what's important. Help our life to follow you, Father. Help us to honor you and love you as Yeshua pointed to you and told us to honor and love the Father. In his precious name, amen.